Ho hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I was just, I was recording everything now. God, you impatient, Paul. <laughs> Look, most of my shows only use Craig, so I'm used to going right after I hear now recording. Now recording. All right. All right, go, go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. <laughs> so today, today I saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Every every lonely lonely teenage incels date to Valentine's Day this year. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, there's there's a, a huge fight right now going on between all the fucking incel autist fucking <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog fans and all the birds of <laughs> and all the birds of prey fans. Everyone's butt hurt, but the Sonic fans are the ones who are laughing the most. No, all the tweets, all the tweets. I'm sure these are all like, or at least most of them are satire. But I just saw like this whole compilation of tweets of like, I can't believe they said so many homophobic slurs. In the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's nothing. Did you see Birds of Prey? They dropped like 15 n bombs in the first 15 minutes. It was insane. I don't Go know how they managed. Are you straight in, <laughs> straight in, in front of like Rosario Dawson and everything? It was really no, fucked they up. Took the, the, at the beginning, they took the DC logo and the DNC disappeared in the same font. The N word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dear God. I Harley Quinn brought out that tape recorder and it was just the Joker saying the N word over and over. <laughs> that was such a weird part of the movie. It really threw me off. Yeah, and like, I still have no idea like why it was even put in there in the first place. And you know, it was Mark Hamill, the guy who was, he does the original animated version of the Joker. He he reprised oh, his role for that that one bit real quick. It was it was crazy to hear Luke Skywalker say that racial slur over and over. Do you guys over. remember the Joker N word countdown? Oh, dude, that was the funniest thing. And the fuddy duddies of the world, the ones who wanted him to say the N word, they ruined the fucking joke. The joke was he was going, he's, uh, uh you know, he, he's, uh, um, like he's not actually going to say that. Say it. Yeah. yeah, the joke was that he wasn't going to actually say it. And then the video where he's sweating bullets and doing freaking voice exercises and stuff, and and then black man, uh, fucking shows up to stop him. Like that's the joke. Like and, and everyone. Didn't somebody hack the account just to tweet out the N word? Uh, he either it either got hacked or he said it himself. Either way, I think that account got banned. But. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was funnier when he didn't say it. Say so, it, it really fucking sucks. They they really it's spoiled like the party. Is humor. Well, yeah, right. Like you don't you don't have to like sometimes it's it, it's like a nude scene. Like sometimes you don't have to be naked to be sedu seductive. You know, sometimes you don't have to show your boobs. You know, you could just like do a, always... like a sexy dance and then boom. I'm more aroused by that than I would if you just like showed me your boobs, right? And and that's yeah. I always su suspect subversion to the point where it's obvious they're not going to subvert just because of how much they're cramming it down your throats, and that any any narrative analyst would expect it to go the other way. Like, are either you fans of the Arrowverse line of shows? I absolutely hate them. Okay, I absolutely, I, all right. I absolutely love them, like almost. Well, except okay, have Supergirl. You seen on Infinite Earths? I haven't seen that yet, but uh, uh, oh, it, God, already got, it already got. It already got. No, it already got <laughs> fucking spoiled for me. Like the night that it was uh, uh, happening, in the middle of it, I'm like super pissed off. But I, I uh, watched the like first season or something of Arrow, and I was just like, "Wow, they absolutely butchered this character." Like as a comic fan. Okay, I'm, so I'm anyway. Sorry. Throughout season eight of Arrow, they, the whole theme of the season was Oliver Felicity. accepting that he. Oh. Felicity isn't in season eight. She, she stopped playing that character, except for the That's last episode. I think. But, <laughs> um, so, throughout season eight, the whole plot is that Oliver has to accept his fate. He has to die in the crisis to save Barry and Kara, the Flash and Supergirl, and everybody else. And. I was expecting, because, you know, they jammed the death down your throat so much. I was like, they're not going to fucking kill him. They're obviously not going to fucking kill him. Because that would be the obvious thing. But obviously, because anybody...
empathy with half a brain would come to that conclusion, they did kill him. Thank God. Uh. Was it like Arrow was so bad at a point with the Felicity shit that the Arrow subreddit started reviewing Breaking Bad every week instead of. Instead of <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was that bad. They were like, this is a Breaking Bad subreddit now. And they did like reviews on like the last few episodes of Breaking Bad when it was coming out. I really like Arrow. In fact, it's like the only show in the Arrowverse I like anymore, which is why I'm sad it's over. Like, The Flash lost me after season four. The rest of them didn't even catch me at all. So I was only into Arrow. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and stop talking about WV shows because I have yeah, like so many rants. Yeah, boring shit. I, I, I got the Iowa caucus. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I got so many rants. Like, we're going to have to do, like, an episode where we talk about the WB shit because I absolutely love most of those shows. I, I, I'd never really gotten to Supergirl because, well, you know what? We're not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to talk about the <laughs> fucking Iowa caucus. But before we do that, a one, a two, a skiddly diddly. Dude. All right, welcome to the MoCast, everyone. I'm your host, Mo Diggity, and joining me today is the now not-so-sick Robin. Say what's up, Robin. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, joining me today as well is our other co-host, Riley. Say hi, Riley. Every day I am varying degrees of almost sick, and I know the real sick is coming. Oh, isn't that the fucking worst, man? Like when you're trying not to be sick and you know the sickness is coming, but you're you're kind of like, it, it's like it prick teases you a little bit. It's like, okay, you're not going to be sick. Or are you? Like you son of a bitch. Dun, dun, dun. And all you want to be is, all you want to do is just be sick so you can get over being sick. Because the sooner it's over, the sooner you can get back to your normal life. But it doesn't allow you to do that. It just sort of portions portions itself out for like several freaking days. I almost burped there, shit. But you know what? We ain't here to talk about being sick. We ain't here to talk about the WB. We're here to talk about. The Iowa and uh, even the New Hampshire uh, primary caucuses that happened with the Democrats. And boy, oh boy, I have a thing or two to say about that. I mean, it's it's absolutely so bad where you just expect things to fuck up. Hey, you don't really expect things to really go according to plan at all because you know for a fact that something stupid is going to happen. Somebody's going to hire a freaking company with a really poor choice of names called the Shadow Co Company. I mean, put, you know, my tinfoil hat is already tight enough as it is. No one should be justifying that shit, but they do. <sighs> and yet, even every day, every, every single time that I try to give uh, uh, politicians a chance, they, they subvert my expectations and just like, just kick my freaking knees and my, my, my everything out from under me. Robin, uh, we'll start with you. What, what, what are your initial thoughts from the Iowa and uh, New Hampshire uh, primary caucuses? Well, I mean, New Hampshire is not really a big deal. Iowa, however, Jesus. I, I think it's just because this is the first one where, like, there were a lot of cameras all over it. Like, we really got some in Like, we didn't really have all this, like, footage of all the coin flips. Or, or if we did, they didn't. They weren't nearly as viral. It it was just horrible. I don't think we're going to see a caucus again. Oh, well, I mean, they have to kind of show a caucus because, you know, everyone I wants to I think they're just see... going to switch to primaries everywhere instead. Oh, really? You think that's going to happen? Yeah, this was absolutely... A horrendous showing for the DNC. Yeah, well, there's there's got to be some sort of fallout uh, from this because uh, it's it's inexcusable the the absolute chaotic mess that was uh, Iowa and everyone up and down, even the Republicans are pissed off at the way that it went, and you and not really even for the the reasons that you think. Uh, that they well, would be pissed off for well, a, 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 most of them are, but like there's a sizable portion to shit of them. on the Democratic Party, right? Like that's, that's right, why they're doing that. right, right, right. But yeah, it's it, it's absolutely 
uh, just a freaking debacle. And honestly, I, I don't. I think it's going to be quite some time till the DNC or the Democrats will be able to live this down, uh, uh, because this was this was their party, and all they had to do was just throw it correctly, and they they fucked up royally. Uh, they, they didn't need to. It, it practically runs itself. You're supposed to have professionals be running this for crying out loud. Uh, the people who generally come to these things, who run these things, are, are highly are highly experienced in uh, vote counting and doing all this other stuff. Uh, you'd figure that they wouldn't allow such nonsense to happen, but sure enough, uh, it, it happened. And now you have what we have here today. We have botched freaking coin flipping. Uh, we have, what was it that you said? That there were uh, people d trying to hand deliver ballots to the DNC office and the DNC office outright rejected them? Yeah, so basically we, we um, so what, what happened was that they were still taking uh, like paper numbers down. Yeah. Uh, because obviously that's the best way of record keeping. Like it's way more reliable than record keeping on on like the internet or on any like electronic device. Or so like they, an they app. The paper Russia records. can't hack paper. Yeah. So they had the paper records um, that they were feeding into this Shadow Inc. app. Um, and when it when Biden was like, "Hey, these numbers don't look right," or like the Biden the the Biden campaign were like, "Hey, these numbers seem we like very flawed. Win. We so have some concerns." These numbers concern. obviously aren't right. Well, I mean, to be fair, they weren't right, but I think Biden was just kind of being a bitch, but inadvertently, like, revealed there's a, a big problem. So then they were like, oh, shit, there is a problem. So what's our backup? Oh, well, our backup is the telephone. So they, they go, you know, they pick up the phone. They go, hey, DNC, we've got your, uh, we got your numbers. Um, you, you want us to just give it to you so that way you can get the numbers out there? And the DNC was like, nah, and just, like, hung up. They, they were just like, no, nah, we're not going to take them. So they're like, okay, so the phone backups aren't working. Uh, all right, let's let's um, let's copy down all of our, like, paper records onto, you know, like another piece of paper and then bring those papers to the DNC. And the DNC was like, no, we're not, we don't want those either. <laughs> like, I think the DNC just wants to fucking lose at this point. I honestly don't think that they have any plans of actually winning this election at all. No, of which... course not. They just want Trump to sit in office so that way they don't have to put a Democrat in there because they, they don't want to have to fucking do anything. And then they can just passively sit back and complain about Trump for four more years. Oh, so it's but... the ideal situation. Damn. I have a I... question. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I saw a whole bunch of crazy shit about numbers on Twitter. I don't understand any of it. Who the fuck won? Well, Booty Judge apparently is the uh, the technical oh, winner. Uh, let me go ahead and boot up my stats that I have right here for the Iowa, and uh, I'll do the Fucking New Hampshire Peter one in a little bit. Yeah, dude, let let no one ever tell you let, let no one ever tell you that voting doesn't your vote doesn't count because Bernie Sanders, wink wink, lost wink wink, uh, by only two votes. Uh, dur during the uh, the whole entire debacle, uh, booty ju uh, booty judge or booty gag or whatever the fuck is name. There's like four or five in interpretations, and no one can agree on what exactly to call him. It, 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 it it's literally it changes from 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 show to show, from network to network. I swear. But it's yeah, judge. boot edge edge. Yes, it's in his like Instagram bio or something. Boot edge edge. Oh, boot edge edge. All right, all right. Keep boot edge edge. Yeah. Uh, but we're looking so... at. Oh, hold on a sec. I'm about to answer your question, but it's uh the precinct with the uh, uh, 26.2 percent, and the count was 564 for boot edge edge, <laughs> boot edge edge, and uh, Bernie Sanders with 12 delegate. Uh, 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 Pete had 13. Sanders had 12, and his percentage was 26. Point one percent, with a count of five hundred and sixty-two, so he narrowly, narrowly lost uh, that primary, and a lot of people are disputing that because of the terrible coin flips, and all this. I'll, I'll put as much as I can in the description when we uh, put this up on YouTube. By the way, everyone, uh, it, it was an absolute freaking debacle. It was really just a mockery, a mockery of democracy. Uh, Elizabeth Warren. A democracy, you could say. A, a, a demockery. 
a democracy, if you will. But yeah, uh, looking at Got all him, this, coach. what? I said, "Got him, coach." Uh, I like, but just just looking at all these people, I'm so glad that that Biden is, is going to be losing this whole freaking thing. He's barely in fourth place. Thank God. In, in New Hampshire, he's one, two, three, four, fifth place. Uh, Amy Koblachar, 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 uh is freaking third i have no idea who the hell she is i don't know who Buttigieg, uh Buttigieg is uh either yeah th these two were just recent uh quote unquote uh uh stand-ins or, or just uh, uh i i guess they're they're kind of like obama in a way no one everyone in their district knew who they were but no one outside of their district knew who they were and only reason why I don't know uh, who the fuck Klobuchar is. I don't know who she is either. Uh, she's but she's act cool. if there was a woman in third place, I was expecting it to be Warren. Oh no, Warren's in fourth. Warren is is not uh, going to be uh, the the freaking winner for uh, the, the, this freaking primary at all. In fact, it's Klobuchar either... is like a hip liberal. Buttigieg is like a, a progressive progressive in quotes but actually like a moderate um yeah now let's let's play everybody's Lineup's favorite we got bloomberg of course oh god fuck Just him autocrat guys real quick let's play everybody's favorite iowa caucus game how bad did yang and gabbard do oh uh, well in bad iowa to drop out he yeah. is one, we'll two, get to three, that four, believe five. me well, Yang is in sixth place, and who is the other one? Gabbard. Tulsi oh, Gabbard. Ga Tulsi Gabbard is all the way at the bottom with, and it's fucking goose eggs. <laughs> it's goose eggs all across the board. Same with Michael. No votes for Tulsi. Yeah, it's no one. And, and same freaking thing with uh, Michael Stop and Frisk Bloomberg. Uh, too. He's a son of a bitch that I wish wasn't in the freaking race. He has no business being in politics at all. That guy is an authoritarian piece of shit. And uh, New York it will be better off uh, completely without him, man. He really does represent the, the worst of the New York style uh, Democratic Party up there, man. And to see him still trying to bitterly cling on to what uh, vestiges of relevancy that he has uh, makes me freaking sick to my damn stomach. The son of a bitch, honestly, should be investigated for all the uh, the, the tyranny that he is uh, levied against freaking New Yorkers and the shit that he would pull if he were ever elected president. Uh, that dude actually scares me. Like, I hear boots on the ground. Whenever I hear of Michael Bloomberg, man, like I, I, I could I can easily envision him mobilizing the army against the American populace. I think he is that much of a freaking scumbag. But oh, yeah, God. fucking people. But fucking yeah, Democrats, it's it, it's the worst, too, because, you know, Andrew Yang actually has a pretty decent uh, platform. I don't think. I think he only did really good in a few of the uh, the debates, but they they pulled a, a classic uh, a classic CNN or MSNBC or whatever it is. They wouldn't really let him speak very very much. Same thing, the uh, same thing that they did. Did you see how biased the media was against Yang? Oh, Holy completely. Shit. Oh, completely. There wasn't there wasn't a week where there there wasn't a debate where on Twitter hashtag let Yang speak wasn't trending at all you know uh hashtag, it, um, hashtag yang media blackout you want to talk about media blackout yeah it's fucking bernie oh bernie yeah bernie's getting the shaft too it's the same thing that they did to dennis kucinich and ron paul uh back in the day you know because ron paul would just get freaking blacked out by the rnc they wouldn't let him talk at all it's and what's happening cr Oh, <laughs> did you guys see that stupid? No, did you guys see that stupid fucking news graphic that compared to Bernie Sanders by himself with three other, oh, candidates, other candidates combined? 
Oh, yeah, I actually so have... Bernie Sanders has 26%, but these three candidates combined have 51%. How can Bernie win? Yeah, uh, <laughs> good, that... good thing he's not running against three people at once at the same time with the same fucking votes, you stupid ass. Yeah, and that's really fucked up because that really does go to show... That really does show you how absolutely corrupt our media apparatus is when it comes to a candidate that they do not like. Like, I'm looking at the picture right here. Sanders, 26%. Sanders versus moderates is the name of this stupid fucking meme that was plastered all over the real actual uh, quote unquote news, our legacy media uh, that we have just crapping this country up. Uh, booty gay, uh, booty day, booty fucking judge, god damn it. Uh, fucking Koblachar, Kublakan, uh, and, and let me sniff you, uh, Biden here. Uh, the three of them are combined 53%. Like, what is that even supposed to mean anyway? Uh, these people, I don't think that there uh, are, are any of these people still in the Senate or in Congress in any capacity. Is, is Biden even serving in the House or the Senate? Biden? Yeah, is, I, is he I even? I don't think so. Okay, so he's completely irrelevant when it comes to the long term of, of everything Besides else. Besides being the vice president of Barack Obama. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he's, so that's he's not irrelevant. irrelevant. That's pretty well, important in an Ron, election. Did well, you say yeah. Ron Obama. Wait, well, Barack Obama. Well, yeah. My, it sounds like you said Ron. <laughs> well, yeah. My, my bad. L allow me to clarify. I mean, he's he's irrelevant when it comes to the House and the Senate, and when it comes to say, uh, uh, say uh, Sanders wins the presidency, like he'd have no he he has no kind of pool or no vote whatsoever in either the house or the senate so he's he's completely out of the 53% so he doesn't matter uh Buttigieg, uh he's uh isn't he a, a mayor or a governor of some sort he's not in the senate yeah, or the house mayor. is he I've heard I've heard him be called a mayo Pete so I imagine that means mayor so that that means absolutely nothing when it comes to a uh, quote unquote theoretical uh, uh, President Sanders uh, to a Sanders presidency, it wouldn't even matter. It, so that that's two down. So Koblachar, I have no idea who this person is. Is she in the House or the Senate? Uh, I don't know. I don't know nothing about Koblachar. Uh, all right. Klobuchar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, um, it, I think she's in the Senate. Yeah. Okay, so out of three people, we have one who's actually relevant and whose uh, uh, opinion could possibly uh, uh, sway uh, a Sanders policy that he wants to throw down the pipes to uh, towards these people. The other two, it wouldn't even matter. So this 53% uh, uh, number is completely yeah, incumbent bogus. incumbent United States Senator from Minnesota. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that makes sense. A member of the Minnesota Democratic Farmer Labor Party. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Well, so you got a little bit of pro-unionist in there, which honestly we need a little bit more. It's it's really sad that we're seeing our labor union. Fucking union. preach, brother. Oh, dude, like uh, uh, I have my problems with some of the the union stuff, but what really opened my eyes to uh, unionization was when I was working at the power plant. Uh, the nuclear power plant in my local area. And this also opened my eyes to how absolutely safe and absolutely and like a, how a viable how viable an alternative nuclear power is for the world. Like a lot of people, I'm not saying that they're, they're ignorant or anything. I'm not even saying that the bad stuff said about nuclear power isn't exactly true. But if you really if you actually worked at a nuclear power plant in any capacity they they make you go through a uh, days of uh nuclear safety testing and uh, tests and stuff like that and you have to pass these tests you can't write the answers down or anything you have to uh, actually study for these tests and so not every single little person is going to get that nuclear power job but anyway hold on one sec Literally everything I know about nuclear power is what I heard from Dick Masterson on the biggest solution in the universe. <laughs> I don't think I've I don't think I've heard that episode. One of one but, of Dick's solutions was, and I quote, "Nuclear fucking power." Yeah, <laughs> that was well, Dick's solution. Well, nuclear power 
it is it's it, it is a, a really great energy source and anyway so yada 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 but the thing that really opened my eyes to organized labor is uh, i watched all the unionists and stuff and how absolutely efficient that their uh, the, the way that they work the way that they'll switch out uh, uh, personnel like if they start seeing someone like grabbing for the rails and they're too tired they'll tap out and freaking tag someone in so they can finish the job and there's no like uh th there's no uh uh uh, uh like put downs or anything like that it was like the dude's tired we don't want him to die on your shift do we so yeah it would be rational to have somebody back in you and there's like backups for the backups for the backups and there's uh their, their break time uh schedule is great you know they work like an hour and a half two hours and they'll take an hour break you know they'll they have a great lunch they have great medical and dental and all that like talking to the unionists at the plant you know that that really did open my eyes to how a uh, great uh unioniza unionization is uh, uh for the country and it's a damn shame that it's getting pretty much ripped to pieces by the bureaucrats in washington and all and just countrywide uh once we once we lose unionized labor we pretty much lost the fight as far as workers rights are concerned so here's a spicy question for everyone yeah. This is where we get real spicy. We get real heated. What is everybody's least favorite Democratic candidate in the race? Joe oh, Biden. for uh, Biden or Bloomberg? Wow, really? Oh, uh, well, like Biden? Yeah, definitely Biden or Bloomberg. I, I agree one hundred percent with Robin. The thing that bothers me the most about Pete, well, I guess I'm repeating myself a, a tiny bit. Hold on, is I like, wasn't done. oh, okay, my bad, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was sorry. gonna say something. Um, yeah, something you said something you're done right Shush. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm honestly not a fan of pete like i tweeted out on twitter like right after yang dropped out i was like all right here are my voting preferences as of now number one bernie number two any democrat except pete number three trump number four pete Ugh. I, I am not a, a fan of the rest of the uh, the ticket, and it's a real shame because, well, I guess I like Tulsi a little bit. It's a real, you know... Tulsi screwed. She doesn't have even the ghost of a chance. Yeah, she got screwed because Hillary Clinton bullied her off, out of the primary and into irrelevancy because she made up a bunch of bullshit lies about him, or, uh, hurt him, about her being a quote unquote Russian agent. And there was absolutely, it was hysterically uh, funny how zero proof there was of that stupid claim, how absolutely dubious of a claim it really was. But her fan base, well, you know what? Uh, Hillary fans are a lot of things, but stupid isn't really one of them. And so all of her fans just went with it. And we had her her entire freaking uh, thing, uh, her entire uh, her hopes, her dreams of being president completely tanked because of I'm bitter and I'm jealous because I'm not uh, the president of uh, freaking Hillary Clinton, which I, I view her kind of with the same contempt I do with Biden. Uh, Biden, like her and Biden, are like the establishment through and through. They're the old money, the the old ways of doing things, and it really sucks that we're we're probably never going to be able to get rid of them. And when we do, when they die, uh, their corruption will probably spread to their uh, their handpicked successors, and there won't be there will be fuck all we can do about it. Uh, Robin, what are your thoughts? Um, can you repeat real quick? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Robin. What are your thoughts? Because I'm ranting here, so I figured you just have. Just in general. Oh uh, well, like it, it just I, I guess like at the end of uh, Riley's question here. Yeah, I, can you repeat the question? Is what I. Asked. Oh, uh, uh, well, I, I mean, I, I guess. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts as far as like a uh, uh, your your, I guess your candidate of choice and uh, uh, about like a I guess specifically. What do you think about what happened with uh, Tulsi Gabbard and all the maliciousness that uh, that happened that was uh, thrown her way, uh, not only through the Clintons but through the, the rest of the Democratic establishment? Um. Well, I don't like Tulsi at all. 
So, like, I was pretty glad to see her get, like, a portion of a percent during the Iowa caucus. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like, oh, she, her supporters don't exist. They're, they're not real. They're are not my... Just, like, are these just, like, bots I see online? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel a little bad for her because I, I think that she she really did have, like, some, some pretty decent ideas uh coming uh, coming around uh, you know coming around and she when she's allowed to speak she does sound very intelligent she doesn't sound like a she has like a a hidden agenda or anything like that i think it's your typical progressive uh left-wing democratic agenda and uh that was kind of refreshing because there, there wasn't like a anything extra with that you know it was pretty much just plain cut and dry but because that doesn't really uh sell ad time and that's not really clickbait worthy she pretty much just got the shaft as as far as my opinion goes at the very least but uh so let's see let's see let's see but yeah I'm, I'm on team bernie i've been on team bernie since the like 2016 election like Oh yeah, it's it de Bernie's definitely my my well, it's my pick now. I mean, it was Andrew Yang because I I I wasn't re I'm not I'm still not really that big on a universal basic income because I kind of believe especially since that he did nothing to dismiss the fear of um you know what what do we do when we get a thousand dollars a month and then you know all the grocery stores increase the price of bread to like nine dollars and you know milk is seven dollars. You know, gas goes up to like you know nine dollars a gallon. What, what do we do then? You know, like yeah, you, you ha you're giving us this universal basic income or, or like rent control laws. If he at least brought up something about rent control laws in addition to his UBI, like fuck, like I think UBI is a great way to sort of curb this like late stage capitalism that we're, we have going on right now. But he just did nothing to to like decommodify anything. So the market's just going to account for everyone having a thousand dollars more a month. Yeah, and he never really talked about how he exactly, exactly. He never brought up market adjustments or anything like that. We were just sort of just sitting there going, "Well, uh, yeah, Andrew Yang, thousand bucks, fuck you," and that's all we really got. You know, if it's if it's like X amount of gallons of gas per month, and you know, X amount of rations per month, like that's different. But like a thousand dollars per month, and rent is you know at a set price in in these areas, and you know. Like then, then we're talking like, okay, yeah, sure, that works. We can do that. Uh, the, yeah, that was. He only had like his his big drawing power was the thousand bucks and the anti uh, uh, automation thing, which uh, you know my 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 first big exposure to Andrew Yang was through his Joe Rogan Experience interview, and uh, he sold me on on a lot of his points, and. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of UBI of universal basic income because I do kind of believe that with, with even without factoring the market correction and all that stuff, I kind of believe that satisfaction is the death of desire, you know, because what are you going to do if uh, you don't have to really work anymore? You could just like get a thousand bucks a, a month or something. You can pay all your rent and bills and all that stuff and just be good. And have like a little bit left over for yourself. Well, yeah, sure, it's cool when we're all artists and YouTubers and all that stuff. But what happens when you get freaking bored? You know, like what happens when, you know, we, we already have an obesity epidemic in this country. What happens when we hit wall -E status, you Hello, know? Hello, my name's Riley Brooks and I'm 400 pounds. Hello, my name's Mo. I'm fat as shit. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like what, what happens when everyone is just... You know, they're just too satisfied and they're not motivated. They don't have that boot up, to, uh, boot to the ass to go motivate them to go to, to do better things, to better themselves, to, to better quote unquote society, whatever that means to you, right? And uh, as, as, as much as I want to combat automation, what else are we going to do when? A lot of people have lost their jobs and universal basic income is implemented. What are we going to do to uh, to to motivate the workforce? Uh, do you do you think maybe? Well, I, I, I'm not really talking to any of y'all per se, uh, I guess to the listeners. Uh, what would you do? You know, would you would you think that maybe 
your town having, say, a ton of uh, dentist offices, do you think that's a good idea? Because I kind of get a little, because I'll get a little aware when I see too much of one thing open because you start to see the uh, the businesses uh, in, in relation to those, say, well, say the dentist offices and stuff. Once there's like 15, 10 or 15 dentist offices in the small town, only one of them is going to do really well because all of them are going to go under because there's too many choices. It's the exact same reason why I'm slightly opposed to uh, a free college for everyone is because like, well, what happens to the world and what happens to our country when there's a million doctors and a million lawyers for every single state? You know, not all of them are going to be able to gotta open put up. that shit behind a paywall. That's the solution. There's already enough paywalls as it is. <laughs> exactly. That, I'm saying that's what you're saying. That's we gotta put that shit behind a paywall, man. Can't have the poor. We can't have the poor people becoming smart. That's what. <laughs> well, hold on a sec. That that was not what I was saying at all. <laughs> I, I think I think we need to have. I think we need to have much, much better education for the poor, and I think that section of uh, of, of education should be free for uh, for there Americans. There should be free college, but not every college. Well, I think that trade schools should be totally free. It should cost you nothing to learn how to be an electrician or a plumber. Or uh, so you don't have to exactly get a job being a freaking janitor or, God forbid, a fucking dishwasher for some disgusting chain restaurant like I used I mean, to no, have to like, do. I mean, like, the world we're heading toward in, like, a couple hundred years is that at some point, everything that is not artistic is literally just going to be robots. Unless, unless it's something that actually takes creativity, it's going to be a robot. I don't know, man. I watched the Stereos play. Uh, 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 I, what was that? I Robot Detroit Become Human, and there was a there was a segment in that game where uh, one of the char one of the characters was talking to one of the robots from Cyberdyne, and the robot uh, created this gigantic mural uh, mural uh, uh, of art. And because uh, the, the the character posed, poised a question to the uh, to the robot, uh, do you think robots can make or androids? Excuse me, uh, I've been saying that wrong this entire time. Goddamn! Uh, do you think androids can create art? And sure enough, uh, it looked like a great painting. And there was a point that I was making about uh, you know like uh, there was a point I was making with this, but he, I think eventually uh, AI. And automated uh, automated industry uh, is going to get to the point where I think all of humanity is probably going to be pushed out of the, the absolute majority of uh, jobs out there because eventually you're not really going to have to have a store clerk manning a convenience store. Uh, you're not going to have to have a, a, a human dentist. Uh, eventually, after technology progresses, that that uh, you can uh, make automated or you can make a, a, a robotic freaking dentist and stuff like that. It'll be, of course, much more efficient. I mean, for crying out loud, we invented a robot that can peel the skin off of a grape. Uh, that's that's both beautiful and horrifying at the same time. I think. But yeah. Uh, R Riley, what are your what are your thoughts on uh, uh, automation? What what do you think we could do as, as a as a people to uh, uh, stem the tide of uh, uh, of loneliness, of of misery, of not feeling like we're we're worth anything? Because you know, what's a person without a job? You know, like that's the worst thing that can ever happen. Well, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a person is to lose their their way of life, their their means of conveyance, or their, their means of just supporting uh, themselves or their family. What do you think we can do? Um, it's it's a very hard question. Like at that point, it kind of seems like it kind of seems like in a world where there's no jobs, it kind of has to be like some form of like communism, like. Well, why? I don't see what else we would do. Like, just like have the government provide people with the things they need to live, 
and then that's it. Like, I don't see alternative solutions here. So you think that automation would lead to a communist government? I mean, yeah, not like maybe like, you know, quote unquote, true communism rather than the communism that kills everybody. <laughs> <laughs> do you think such a do you think such a thing could ever be implemented? Because the people well, the one of the basic tenets of communism is to get rid of the dissidents, you know, the the dissenters and the people who don't want to uh, want to live under a communist society, though. Do you think that that would be implemented in, in like, say, America well, I mean, in an automated people, society? Like... You wouldn't just, like, kill them off. But, like, the thing is, if people don't want to live in the communist society, their only other option is to steal shit because everything they're getting is what they're supposed to have unless they steal it. And they steal shit and they go to jail for stealing. And they either stop stealing or they keep stealing and they eventually die in jail. And that's how it works. Oh, Jesus, this is fucking depressing. I don't want an automated <laughs> society. Uh, well, Robin, I guess same question to you. Uh, what do you think we can do to stem the tide of the blah blah and the hubla and all that stuff that I just said to Riley? <laughs> the blah blah and the hubla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess let me let me repeat it so I'm just not leaving you hang out to dry, hanging out to dry. Like, what what do you think is a, a solution in an automated world to yeah, combat yeah, you know misery question. and all that stuff? Um, and yeah, I mean. I would love us to move in a more socialist direction. I mean, I think it's going to take a long time to get to like, you know, actual, you know, like, I think we're, we're years, if not like, you know, a century or more away from like a true free society with no government. But like that, that would be ideal for me. I mean, I want to move towards, um, you know, uh, like market socialist options, you know, having, you know, worker co-ops and, and um, you know, syndicates, that kind of stuff. I just really um, want society to be at the point where I don't have to work. Like, I just want... Well, I want some... people to be able to contribute to, si to society in the ways that they want to contribute to society. No, nah, just give me some, some video games and some fucking food paste, and I'll be <laughs> fine. So you want idiocracy, then? I just want to be able to do whatever I want, not work. That's the dream. Go away, Baton. <laughs> just give, just give me like generic food ma mash, and water and internet, and I'll be fine. <laughs> oh my dear God! All right, Robin, continue. <laughs> oh, that was that was mostly it. I mean, I think. Oh, okay. Um, uh, like automation should be, not to, uh, like benefit um the the upper class that you know do doesn't have to pay workers anymore it should be to better society as a whole like its sole purpose shouldn't just be for you know the rich fucking billionaire capital b billionaire ceos to you know yeah maximize uh, to profit save a few bucks yeah yeah just uh, basically maximizing profit on the at the expense of everyday people uh you know, the thing that fucking scares the hell out of me is uh, I, I see these freaking I see all these uh, one percenters, these business owners and all that just excuse me. Damn, I had some barbacoa earlier and it is making me freaking burp like freaking crazy. I've muted myself while y'all are talking so many damn times. <laughs> And on top of these fucking allergies that will not stop messing with my nose, I'm I'm having to snort more than freaking dark side fill. I swear to God, oh, and like, you oh, just snot, <laughs> disgusting snot. Like you know, th this is the snort that you don't want to hear. This is see, there there's oh. two, yeah, there's two si tw types of DSP, snorts. There's yeah. oh. DSP, and then there's the party one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I, I am not partying right now. See, me, though, uh, I, I just expect uh, all, all of these bastards to just basically enslave us. And uh, either that or just exterminate us because these people, they don't have they don't have feelings like real people do. You know, they, they look at. I swear the 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 ultra one percent, not like the Michael Jordans and and professional athletes, uh, regular one percenters, the rich people, regular rich people. You know, 
uh, the, these uh, the Paris Hiltons of the world, the 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 uh, the, the Jeff Bezoses of the world. Like, dude, I can see them try uh, taking over government and just buying freaking concentration camps for all the populace. And just, like, systematically murdering us. Like, I really do. I mean, I don't mean to get too tinfoil, but have you ever heard of uh, Rex, 80, Rex 84 and the continuity of government uh, clause that uh, the government has just in case there's an uprising or a human-level extinction event? It's to, to preserve the sanctity, the, the sanctity of the government in times of absolute crisis and necessity. I have not heard of this. Oh, well, if you really want to fall asleep, uh, you know, soundly tonight, uh, go ahead and Google, you know, Rex 84 and Google uh, uh, the Cottony of Government Act. It's it's, it's really fucked. And this is not the podcast exactly to talk about those type of things because some people try to call them conspiracy theories, but they're there in black and white ink on paper uh, past, uh, past in government. So it's not a conspiracy theory. It's very real. But yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, you see, I, I just, I, I don't believe, I do not trust the current day apparatus that we have uh, for an automated future, to, to usher in an automated future. And the only way that we, I can have, I can see an automated future that's, that's bright and is for everyone is if we completely uh, get rid of the, the old money and completely get rid of the sons of bitches that are screwing us over daily, uh, every hour of every single day. Because the Jeff Bezos is of the world, the, 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 the freaking Sam Waltons, the Walton family and those scum, uh, they would have every single one of us, I think, in chains. And honestly, I kind of think that uh, automation is sort of a step in that direction for totalitarian dictatorship. Because, hey... For some reason or another, corporations don't really have to obey the rules anymore. Uh, they'll just pay a fucking fine, and they'll get off. So what's going to happen if, like, say, Walmart hires a Blackwater-type freaking... Uh, 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 what? I said just pay the fines. I have some personal experience with that, actually. Um, well, all right. Let, let me let me let me finish this tinfoil rant, and I'll let you go ahead and talk, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, like all all they gotta do is just hire some Blackwater mercenary group, and you know what's what's going to stop them? Uh, the government doesn't seem to want to ever do anything. These people hardly, rarely ever get in trouble for anything that they ever do at all, no matter if it's embezzlement or uh, uh, hiring illegal uh, workers from across, uh, who uh, cross the border illegally and depriving Americans of those jobs first. You know, it, they, 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 they never... They took their jobs. Well, like, it, it don't, well, it's not like a... I, I guess diminish it to just that little basic meme. It, 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 while it's funny, there's nothing funny about seeing a small town and half its population uh, not being able to find work because the companies want to want to freaking cut corners. And and I don't blame I don't blame immigrants at, at all whatsoever for that because you know every man has to go get a job, right? You, you can't just let your family starve or every woman too. You know, like it's. Uh, you know, well, it's it's a I fucking mean, shame. The the country shouldn't be letting its people starve. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all, not at all. But we have to, we have to find that balance of, well, whatever like socialist practices that we can uh, uh, that we can uh, give the population that doesn't also uh, crush an entire industry of like food production, right? Because even though I don't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind eating like a, a government food or whatever. We it already would be. have more food in this world than we need. Like, it, like it's like two thirds of the food that we produce go to waste. Like some stupidly ridiculous number. Yeah, that that's fucking shocking. It really is. Like that that's that's a sin. And I don't think still we'll ever. People in the world who can't eat. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Well, that that is a sin. I don't think we'll ever be able to. Uh, to ever uh, get over, but I also don't want to get. I don't want to have uh, people go out of work 
at the same t- uh, be, uh, I don't want them to, to not have a job at the same time, you know, because I, I want everyone to try and be as successful as they possibly can, you know, maximize your happiness and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, Riley, uh, you had something to say. You had an experience with the, the cost of, uh, of everything, of being a corporation or whatever it was that you were about to say. Um, so I actually, so I actually, um, talked to, well, I didn't talk to, but the, he came and talked to us, the superintendent of my school district, because my journalism class made a video because our school just literally took in the entire population of another school that they decided to close. And we made a video about how the class sizes were getting out of control and how, like, they weren't supposed to be that big. Like, there's legal there's legal stuff with that. And the superintendent shows up to our class to basically just yell at us and tell us we're wrong and also, t- also let it slip that, you know, if, you go- if it goes over, if the class size goes over a certain amount, he has to pay a fine. So he just pays the fucking fine. And I'm just like, that's fucking scummy. Jesus Christ. God damn. Are you fucking for real? Yeah. Oh, man. Like, dude, that would never have been tolerated in my town, man. Like, back, if, if this were something that happened back in my day. God, I always feel old whenever I fucking say that. Uh, but, uh. You know that 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 people would have raised bloody absolute hell for that, and it's a, it's a real. I, I feel really bad for y'all, you, your younger generation that has to deal with this stuff, man, because uh, I don't think that's. I, I don't think any of the Democratic candidates right now have uh, any kind of uh, a solution uh, for that. Bernie, as much as I really like him, all he does is talk about having everything for free, but. What I have never heard a plan of like what he's ever going to do about class sizes, uh, what he's going to do about the 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 piss poor mental health uh, 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 offer. Like uh, there there's really no kind of mental health or or e- emotional freaking support in these freaking schools because school absolutely fucking sucks, man. I mean I wouldn't wish school on my worst enemy, even though sometimes I had fun. When I was younger and I was in school, I still would never want to repeat it again. I guess that's why I dropped out of college. Well, I mean, um, you know, Medicare for all would uh, significantly improve mental health in the United States, supposedly, just because everyone would have access to, you know, proper medication and care. (laughs) I really, really hope so. I, I hope that's not a pipe dream because, you know, I get a little skeptical when someone says free, free, free. You well, know, that's like, his biggest running position. He, well, I, I know, I know, I know. I'm but he'll follow through on at least that. I, I'm really hoping that we at least get like a Medicare for all sort of system like that. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit wary of the school thing but uh, or the free college thing, but uh, – uh, the the Medicare for all, I, I think that is a really great thing. That w- that that would be something that would benefit I mean, we our country for, greatly. Uh, you know, college education for everyone. Like, it just leads to a smarter America. Well, true, it's, true, like, true. Yeah, that's a great thing. Everyone should be smarter. Every yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually think that we came into an agreement, to a consensus about like what level of education. Uh, well, I, I mean, at least I think what level of education should be free and what should be politely uh, at, at low cost uh, should be uh, uh, politely uh, uh, put up against the pay uh, behind a paywall. Well, I mean, uh, it's not really at low cost. Well, no, I mean, I would like to have the cost lowered. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Of course, like because I, I would I mean, never I think everyone should have access to the same amount of education as everyone else but not like i'm not saying make harvard free right like but i'm saying like you you should be able to get like a degree you know oh well uh what would be the uh uh, the 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 limit i guess to the degree like what what was your interpretation of that what's what's your idea of that well i mean right now we have community college but that's still like 
it, it's affordable for like you know like lower middle class but like if you're impoverished you you can't it's it's not exactly easy to afford you know a uh, community college you know that's actually something that's changed uh, for the worse from when I was much much younger to now uh, cuz we used to have a community college and it used to be like almost everyone who wanted to go there for uh, uh, for aquaculture or you know like uh, being able to set up a uh, 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 tanks and stuff like that you know for uh, uh, the aquifers and junk or uh, uh, math degrees and other stuff or uh, uh, decent mechanics people like the people from my income bracket which sometimes is middle class sometimes was lower working class said it just depended on how the year was going <laughs> You know, we would be able to uh, afford to go to those uh, uh, places, you know. And people used to be able to go to their little towns and go to those little uh, uh, community colleges and actually make something of themselves. And then when the Bush administration happened, they just started allowing a, a, a Sally, I think it was Fannie and Freddie Mac or, or Sally Mae and Freddie or fucking something it's god that was such a long time ago those that that's that's a group of bastards i, I wish were forcibly removed from the planet Oof. uh like the, the college loan industry is you know the those are some evil motherfucking people man and as much as i i i like a student loan debt to be wiped out i'll believe it when i see it honestly that seems to be a, a nice feel good buzz uh, you know a, a nice feel good clickbait headline that every candidate up there so far this year has said i believe of course bernie a little bit more than i do the others but like i said i'll believe when i see it but uh, yeah, now people are not really able to, they're almost not able to afford to even go for a basic two-year degree in community college. And it makes it, makes, it makes it feel like the dish pits and the janitorial jobs, it, it really makes it feel like that really is our future. And it, you know, I, it's, it's almost uh, fucking desolate. It's like emotionally, it's just soul crushing. But yeah, uh, we're coming. Uh, we're coming up at the uh, the top of the hour here. Uh, you guys have anything else you want to say, uh, Robin? We can start with you if you like. Uh, vote blue, no matter who. <laughs> vote For blue. Real. Vote blue. Blue, no matter who, unless it's Pete. That's my no, saying. no blue, no matter who. If not not voting for the Democratic nominee is just a vote for Trump. I don't know, man. Yes, I'm, I will I'm, vote for Trump if Pete's the nominee. Uh, buddy, I, I, God, I, if, if I were feeling the Democratic, if Bloomberg pool, is the nominee. I'm voting for Bloomberg. Ooh, I'm sorry if that's the case. Uh, I, if in that case, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, I'll just abstain from voting in, in that case because I, I will not ever vote for bloomberg because all for all that for all the pain of the ass and the shitty behavior that trump has ever that, that trump has done so far at least i haven't seen stop and frisk being implemented under his presidency and i haven't seen a lot of uh bloomberg-esque stuff come from the the trump admin yet i mean though i i fear that that day may come because he loves to talk a lot about law enforcement really hasn't done jack shit for them too i think he he's a really good businessman he's a great he's a great talker he's a great orator but he he shafts people uh left and right no matter if it's the working class no matter if it's the freaking cops or the military he he's really gotten away with uh giving the absolute basic minimum the, the absolute mandatory minimum that you could possibly give someone. And if you just put a little bow tie or a little cherry on top, the population just claps along and they just say, Yay, that's our president. I'm so happy. And it really fucking sucks because, you know, if you actually put the fire to his ass, to his heels or whatever, you know, you could probably make Trump actually do stuff. 
But as it is right now, his fan base really doesn't, you know, his fan base yells at him, but they're also yelling, I'm still voting for Trump. I mean, how valid are your criticisms then? You know, like you, you got to you got to be like Democrats in 2012. You got to threaten uh, to not uh, vote for somebody you got it because there was a, not that great of a turnout in the 2012 elections for on the Obama on Obama side because he pissed off a lot of his base and for once people followed through with their threats and I was really happy to see that it wasn't as much it was it was still a pretty landslide victory but but still people followed through with with their with their uh, uh, threat and I was really happy to do that their threat to not vote all right their, their threat to not vote yes yeah that's just accelerationism it's pretty gross i don't think that's accelerationism right, yeah. that's that's just the middle finger to them is like if you don't start yeah, doing that's what accelerationism we... i don't believe it's that the, it's the idea that you, you know what accelerationism right it's the, it's the idea of like um if, if you let um you know like if, if for example if bloomberg is running against trump the the idea that a lot of like the bernie or busters have is um, well, if we don't vote, then Trump will win, and then they'll understand for the future. Or maybe our threats will work. Oh, and well... Like, well... <laughs> well, no, the, the, the threats that I'm talking about is, like, dude, you didn't do these things that we kept asking you and asking you to do, uh, and we know that this is your last term. You know, I'll just deprive you of a vote, and, and that's just going to be, it. like, to me, uh, I'm not really thinking of, like, you know punishing the masses i'm just thinking of just like you know I mean, flipping the finger deal, i'm know, just romney versus obama because romney was basically just the white obama like they were pretty pretty much the same person uh yeah he was he was damn near the, the same thing i got to say it's it was kind of like the 2000 election between bush and gore there wasn't a real choice on the ballot you know they were essentially the same guy Ugh. Which, I mean, it was nice that, Amer like, you know, it was the same person, and America was like, yeah, we'll pick the black one over the white one. Like, that's... that's <laughs> things, well, yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's asinine to go, well, uh, even though these are the same two people, I'm not going to... I'm not going to make like the president that I'm currently under right now a one-termer, because that sort of... It, it sort of shows the rest of the world that we're not as stable as uh, we purport to be. And so that if if we start showing real signs of political instability, especially in our leadership, especially with the presidency, uh, we will be subject to a host of all sorts of really bad shit. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think this is pre this is pretty much the hour now. Uh, Robin, you got any f besides vote blue or uh, no matter who, is are those your pretty much your final thoughts for the on the matter? That's that's pretty much my final thoughts. Vote, vote blue, no matter who. Don't don't let the fascists stay in office. Hell yeah, hell yeah. R uh, Riley, uh, you have anything to say besides that? Um, Pete bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's that bad. I just I don't know if I buy into the hype because he seems like ultimately I I feel that he's kind of a prop for the DNC. Because, like I said, no one knew who he was unless you were in his district or in his uh, in his city. So yeah, that, that's that's my problem. Is like I I hate it when unknowns just come out of the blue with with like not a whole lot of fanfare, but suddenly they do just so they they just do so well in these primaries, and you're like, dude. I've never met a freaking fan of this guy or a supporter of this guy in my life. Like, how the hell is he doing so well? And, like, I've, I'll be honest with you. I've never even heard this dude on TV until he started doing well in the, in the, uh, in the polls in, in, after the first couple of debates. Never heard a word for about that guy. <sighs> but anyway, uh... Riley, where can they find you? What's your stuff? What you got uh, the hawk do? You can find me on Twitter at Riley Tweets. You can find me on God Brain. Please work. Please function. 
you got you got you, you got too much Sonic thing. on the brain. <laughs> too gotta go Sonic fast. Too much fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Pixels, polygons, and fun wherever podcasts are found. Pokemon Variety Hour on Stitcher or Spotify. And finally, um, the Riley Podcast Mega Feed. That's the important one. Stitcher or Spotify. Subscribe. Do it, damn it. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> the Dickheads Podcast. The Dickheads Podcast. Yeah, the new host of the Dickheads Podcast. Go listen to the Dickheads Podcast on the Clark Cast Media <laughs> RSS feed. And that's that's the name of the podcast and not a swear toward his uh, to, toward his person, you know. It's not go listen to this Dickheads Podcast. It's go listen to the Dickheads Podcast. <laughs> the Dickheads Podcast. <laughs> Oh, Robin, what's your stuff? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Insight Alloy. You can also find me on Twitch where I sometimes stream. It becomes less and less every time I say it. <laughs> uh, Twitch.tv slash Insight Alloy. Stream, Robin. Stream, damn it. I'll watch. I know. I got to stream more. Definitely, definitely. I got to finish up my Final Fantasy three playthrough because I'm, I'm looking forward to playing KOTOR. I've just been like doing a lot of I'm, stuff. I'm going to watch the shit out of you play KOTOR. You're gonna oh, it. it's it, it's going to happen because I, I basically have to find Locke. And uh, there's a few things in the world of Ruin that I have to do in FF3 before I actually get to KOTOR. And I'm almost there, too, because the Tower of Kefka is coming but first i gotta get the treasure in the star cave and i gotta get past the tower of the magi and so that's gonna be a lot of fun and well i'm mo diggity you can catch me at youtube.com forward slash c forward slash mo diggity 42 mo diggity 42 on instagram happy good boy 420 at twitter and uh twitch that's TV's. your friend's twitter right uh, yes, that's my friend's uh, Twitter. Totally, totally not me. That's my Twitter. Uh, I to- run that one. Oh yeah, Riley runs. <laughs> Riley, Riley runs Happy Good Boy 420 because you know I've been banned forever and I'm not allowed back on the platform. Wink, wink. Dutch, don't say no more. Say no more. And twitch.tv slash Mo Diggity. Oh, all right, everyone. This has been a, a, a really good podcast. I just, I, I, I just want to choke the establishment so goddamn much after like the last fuck debacle the fuck the dnc dude Oof. anyway catch y'all later thanks for listening thanks for coming out ta-ta bye